Newton's first law of motion. Today we are going to explore Newton's first law of motion, sometimes referred to as the law of inertia. We use this law to explain why things move or don't move. The first part of this law states, an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. The second part of Newton's first law says that an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. Let's start by looking at an object at rest remains at rest. Imagine that some objects are lazy and they really want to keep doing what they're doing. For example, if you place your math book on your desk at the end of the school day, it will still be in the same place when you return in the morning, which means your math book isn't going to suddenly disappear. Sorry. In fact, your desk, your chair, your books, none of those things are going to move unless someone or something forces them to. The second part of Newton's first law is just the opposite. An object in motion will stay in motion until something stops it. These objects want to move. Let's call these objects hyper. In fact, they are so hyper, they will not stop moving unless something or someone forces them to. An example of an object in motion is a ball in a game of catch. When someone throws a ball to you, that ball stays in motion until it meets your mitt and is suddenly stopped. Sometimes this first law of motion is referred to as the law of inertia. Inertia means an object isn't going to change what it's been doing. It's going to keep sitting there or it's going to keep moving unless something forces it to do the opposite. But not all objects are the same. Bigger and heavier objects have more inertia, which requires more force to move them or stop them. In other words, a more massive object like a boulder has a greater tendency to resist changes in its state of motion than your math book did. Or it's harder to move a boulder than a book. So, what kinds of things stop a moving object? Sometimes it's people, another object, or due to something called friction. A moving object, like a ball rolling on a flat surface, will eventually slow down and stop, not because someone or something stopped it, but because of friction. Friction is also a force. It is the resistance that one surface or object encounters when moving against another. If you kick a soccer ball on a field, the ball will stop eventually. This is because the grass, or the uneven ground under the ball creates friction, and that friction slows down and eventually stops the soccer ball. But what do you think would happen if we sloped the surface the soccer ball was rolling on? The ball on a sloped surface is still affected by friction. However, another force, gravity, is stronger on the sloped surface so the ball will continue to move downhill despite the friction because gravity is pulling it downward. Not only that, but the ball will even speed up as it moves down the hill, and that is called acceleration. Acceleration is a change in speed or direction. Air resistance is another force that affects moving objects, like a baseball soaring through the air. If no one catches the baseball, eventually it would stop. That's because the air around it is resisting or forcing the ball to slow down. Plus, gravity pulls it down too. The only time something could travel at a constant speed, which means it doesn't slow down or accelerate, would be if there was no friction or gravity, like in space that same baseball would keep moving in the same direction and at the same speed for many years. Thanks to Newton, today we understand that whether an object is in motion, like a ball soaring through the air, 
or at rest, like your math book on your desk, all objects tend to continue doing what they're doing unless they are forced to do the opposite. Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.